in the Dhyan Linga, the Swamis take care from Purnami to Amavasya and the Maas from Amavasya to Purnami. So what is the reason for this and what is the difference in the quality of these two parts of the lunar month? Waxing and waning, that's what is happening. In one, the influence of the moon is receding. In another, the influence of the moon is rising. Moon, you know only as a reflection, because it's reflecting sun's light, you know the moon. You know the sun because he's burning. In a way, in our experience, it's a product of the sun. Not only in our experience, some scientific theories say, it is the solar material which flew out in the spin and became all these planets and satellites and whatever. One small blob became a moon. For human understanding, we are always looking at everything to give it a polarity because all physical substance has polarity leanings. Actually in India, certain trees are identified as male trees, certain trees are identified as female trees. Have you seen in the villages two trees are married? In the villages, young girls go and worship these trees when they want to get married. Two trees get married, entire village attends the wedding. People saw this is a masculine tree, this is a feminine tree because of certain types of inclinations in the tree. So similarly, when they looked at the sun, they saw him as masculine, they saw the moon as feminine. This is not some rural mind's mishap, this is a reality. If they were wrong, the female body wouldn't be in sync with the cycles of the moon. The moon in many ways represents the feminine. If you are male, the problem with you is you're looking towards the female. If you are female, the problem with you, you're looking towards the male because in some way it's not there in you. If you are male, we want the feminine to rise within you. If you are female, we want the masculine to rise within you. This is not to distort nature, but to even out nature. We call Adiyogi, Shiva, the ultimate man, not because he is super macho, he is, <laughs> but because one half of him is woman. That's why he is the ultimate man. So the effort is to make you into that ultimate piece of human being who carries masculine and feminine in equal proportions within you and you are able to conduct life in a very balanced way because these two things are equally there within you. If you are masculine, you don't have the feminine. If you are feminine, you don't have the masculine. In how many ways human beings are suffering because of this absence? So the idea of creating that in the Dhyanalinga temple is not just for those periods, it's established like that. That if you are there in its presence, slowly you will see after some time, you are quite fine. If you look at a woman, you can simply look at her like you look at everything else in the world, which you did when you were a child. The moment you got chemically poisoned, you lost that ability to simply look at another human being as human being. Every small bump in the body became some great world by itself. Every little something became so big simply because you distort it. So to settle the distortion, because it's such a powerful energy field, if it becomes too masculine or too feminine, then it will take people in a different way. Taking people like that into excessively masculine or excessively feminine nature could be useful to do certain type of work, but not useful to live, not useful to live a balanced life. Dhyana Linga is for all. All processes that happen there are wide open because of that. It's managed like this. Many of them, these days, uh, I think they're going into Lingarpanam maybe once in three, four, five years, I think. I've read a lot of hundreds of sharings of how they felt, hundreds and hundreds of experiences which made them 
feel something that would have never happened to them anywhere else. What happened to them was on one level, the masculine and the feminine within you got evened out. It's equal. If the masculine and feminine is in equal proportion, then only both will dare to be full-fledged. When both are full-fledged, you are a full-on life. When you are a full-on life, suddenly you see the psychological process, the emotional process, the social process that's happening around you doesn't mean a damn thing to you because they are all just accessories. People need accessories when they are not full-fledged. You never looked at a man who is walking on crutches and envied him. Oh, he's got four legs, I got only two. If he had golden crutches, maybe you would. So it evens you out so that this is full-fledged. When this is full-fledged, you don't care what somebody has because being alive is better than anything else. <laughs>